Hi, everyone. Welcome to Live with Janome. I'm Ann Hine. And let me get my camera on and say a proper hello. And we'll take this off. There we go. So welcome, everyone, to Janome Live. I'm Ann Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist for Janome America. And today we're talking about creating decorative stitches. And many of you are thinking like, why would I want to create decorative stitches when I have so many in my machine? Well, sometimes we want a special stitch that's not in our machine, or it's something we're tailoring for a project we're doing. And I do that quite a bit when I teach classes. I will bring in a special stitch just for that class. So it's unique to that class. And I'm going to show you a couple things that I've done. Some of these are mine and some are ones that people have sent me. But this is my X's and O's on the very top there. We have a sewing machine. This is my uh, PT zip. It's a little bit further down here as well, down here. So with that one, you can, it looks a little bit like a zipper when you kind of get it going in the right direction. This one up here is a applique stitch that I did. And then as you go down, you can see there's Mr. Tweet. There's my bicycle and the two middle bicycles. Um, this, this stitch goes forward and backwards quite a bit and I wasn't watching, so it didn't go back on itself. You have to guide the fabric so it goes correctly. And so the first one and the last one did pretty well. And then some other stitches. This one here I call bow tails, and I had that in a quilt. This is a diaper pin, and I need to I need to rework this one. It's not the best. I do a little stitch out and then I see. And then when I come in, you can see the heart and home, the Mr. Tweet with a, with a heart. And then at the very bottom is my name and then my mixer. I love my mixer. So you can create, and I have more, I just haven't stitched them all out. So you can create your own stitches for things that you want to do. And I really love that part of it. I love to make a unique stitch just for something that I'm doing. And then you can store them in your machine or you can keep them on a USB stick and, and actually keep a copy in your computer as well. So I'm gonna open the software and I am filming with the software because I do not have, um, I don't, I can't stream that. So I'm going to go over here to my camera and I'm showing you the wide view. And I know you can't see anything really close, but that we're going to get close in a moment. But I just wanted to show you the wide view first, and then we'll go from there. So when you open it, this is what it looks like. And on the very far right up here, this is where a little blue uh, question mark is. That's the manual. And you can open that and expand it. And you can print it out if you want. So in the center here, this is your work area. And this is considered, this is nine millimeter wide right here. And what that, what that means is when you have your foot there, it looks like this. So this may help you clearly understand that better. Let me put my, my foot there. So if you had your, your foot, your F foot, this part here in your F foot in the middle is this represents this part right there, okay? So you can create stitches that start at the bottom, the middle, anywhere you want along that area. And then in here will be where the stitch points will show up as you plot, they come in here, the numbers. These are, there's um, three major tools here. The very top toolbar has the application uh, menu. And so you can uh, open that up and it will give you all of the, the your choices here for a new page open files save and so forth we'll go over that a little bit and then across here are your quick select and you can change those as well down here are the three tabs that take you to your major tools across here so the home key has all of these there's a view key where you can change how your screen looks and then the simulation is what a design looks like when it's stitching. So I'm gonna bring my camera in close to the home screen here so that you can see what the tools look like up close. Hang on one second, I have to, there we go. And then I have to move things a little bit to get them in focus. There we go. All right, so that gives us, almost almost all of the tools that we can see so coming across here the first two 
are, um, we'll be using those in a later lesson. You can move your points, you can highlight points to move points as well. And then we have this area right in here, which when, you, when you're plotting, when you get done, you just hit lock stitch and it will give you your start point, your loop point and your end point. And you could put those in manually as well. When we first had this software, we did not have a lock stitch button. We had to manually put it in. So you had to look through your stitch point list and figure out where to put those points to end to start and end your design. Of course, we have undo and redo, insert, so that if you're creating something and say you have you know two flowers and you really wanted something between those two flowers, there's a way to go back and insert in between there. You can also cut things off in a way, copy and paste. You can mirror image your design. You have some spacing and some extra tools in here as well. So when you open the extra tools in here, this gives you a new menu and I'm gonna slide my camera over so we can see some of that. There we go. And this menu has some choices for uh, stitch width, uh, stitch length, and I'll bring the camera down. You can have uh, thread tension, minimum speed, maximum speed, what presser foot you're using, and so forth. So you can change all of those particular to the stitch that you have there. Let me go back up here. And then when I close that, the, la the last two here are write a design and uh, file manager. And those require, when you're sending when you're bringing designs back and forth to the machine, you do need to use a, a USB stick or be connected by cable. So I'm gonna put my USB stick in. So those that will highlight, here we go. And once we create something, the write a design will highlight and I'll show you how to use write design. This is your file manager. So it connects you to um, what's, you know, what's in your, in your machine, in your computer, and where your folders, you know, where your things are. So you can manage uh, moving things back and forth. So how do you use Stitch Composer? So let me back out just a little bit here so we can see more of the screen. There we go. So you plot your points along this area in here. And you can actually you know, start at the very bottom if you want or the middle um, and then just draw your point. So to start with an e something easy, let's do something easy. I'm gonna start down here in the, my first one and I'm just gonna plot here and I'm gonna go across. Now the, these boxes here, the bigger boxes, this is one millimeter and then there's the tiny little ones in between. So I'm just gonna go around like this And just create a loop that way they can be close these are how far apart your stitches will be you may have some tiny ones and then i think i will go up here again i'll do a skinnier loop and then at the end here i'm going to put a very long stitch and it turns red when you have that long stitch right there and when you go to send that it will ask you a question and we'll sh I'll show that in just a minute. So let's look at this and see how it's, how it's going to stitch. I'm gonna move this up so you can see the viewing area and I'm gonna st uh, start it so you can see, there you go. And then it made that long stitch at the end. Now I didn't do a lock stitch, I didn't end it. So it just stops right there. It, because I might be adding more to it. Let me move this down and I'll show you what happens. When I click on my lock stitch button up here, I've got some extra line, extra dots over here now on this far side. These are my, these will be my uh, loop point and my end point. And if I slide over, I'll move in close so you can see that. Let's see here. And I can make these a little bit bigger as well. So see how there's uh, there's three stitches in there now. So you've got your end point and your loop point and my last stitch in there. So when I do that, let's go back out here a little bit and we'll open up the viewing area and you can see what happens there because I added my loop point and now it's gonna keep continuing 
to stitch. Let's go down there. Let's, let's show you that. All right, there it goes. It's restarting. Hang on one second. There we go. All right, so you can see how that stitches. It's a good way to view your stitch before you go ahead and finish it. Now, let's say I'm going to close this down here for a bit, and I'll just stop it. And let me get this back to a normal size. So I'm using control in my mouse wheel, and that's changing the view of it. But you can always go into your view tab and change the look here. And let me open, let me bring you back up to see that toolbar. There we go. All right, and I'll bring my design back to the start. There we go. All right, now if I want to send this to my USB stick, I'm gonna come up here uh, to my home tab and you can see now that this is highlighted. So I'm gonna write a design and here it's giving me, remember I said it had to give a message for that long stitch. It's giving me an opportunity. I could go back and change that stitch if I want or I can let the software do it. And I'm just gonna let the software do it. It does, it puts its own, it makes the that big length. It won't jump that far. So it splits that into manageable stitches and that's fine for me. So I'm gonna touch okay. And then it opens up my window for transferring to write a design. And you can see right here, this is the ORD folder and in it is my ORDF. And you don't have to put it in the ORDF just like with your EMB and your EMBF folder, but if you're more comfortable, you can use that as well. Now, I have two designs here already, and this one here, I didn't name it, so I'm going to uh, come in here and I'm just gonna call it um, L and, uh, let me see here, I gotta type better. Let's get my cursor in here. There we go, and L, oh, backspace. Well, what's going on with this? Let's rename it. Here we go. Click rename. And I want it to call L loop. There we go. And okay. It's named. Now this is highlighted. So I know uh, I can send it over there. And just to show you that it's on my USB stick, it's right here. Okay. Now I want to show you a couple other things before we go to the machine. Of course, you could make folders here as well if you wanted to, to uh, organize your uh, stitches. So let's go back and I'm going to get a new page. So I'm going to go to my application tab here, or I could use my quick select either way. I have a new page. You can bring in a backdrop. So let's go look at, um, I'm going to go in here to my folder. And when I go to open, this opens in my computer and you can see, you know, you have your choices on the side here and I'll just do this drop down. You can kind of see where my, my stuff is. There's my OneDrive, there's my uh, created folder. And then these are all the stitches that I have. Um, I also have a folder. Let's go into this one that says, oh, let's open Stitch Composer. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so let's open the hearts one. So in here, I have a graphic that I want to bring in as a backdrop. So it should open up. Let's see. Well, that's my stitch. Hold on one second as we come back in here. Let me go to view and backdrop, here we go. So there's my my piece. I have to go into, I'm opening a backdrop, so I have to go to backdrop. So there's my heart. These are some other JPEGs of hearts, but I'm gonna use this colored one and go in there. And when it comes in, I can use these to make it as big or as um, small as I want. So I'm gonna make it as large as I can in my nine millimeter area. I have some tools here, I can lock it so it doesn't move and I can make it transparent. So it's sort of behind my, my blocks. Now I can go back to my home. So just to recover back from where we were, when I went to my file open, 
this takes me to my designs, okay, any stitch designs that I have. If I want a backdrop, I would go to view and backdrop, and that opens my backdrops with my graphic. This will open graphic files. The other one will open stitch files, just to have the difference in there. All right, so let's go back to home. And now I'm going to put some, uh, I'm gonna create my heart. And I'm gonna start over here at the, at the, uh, the very beginning. And actually, I wanna be on the very bottom, so I can hit backspace and then here. And I'm gonna jump over and make that one big stitch. And that's fine. I know the software will split that for me. And then I'm at the point of my heart. I'm going to put one there. And then I'm going to go around my heart like this. And these are as big as my stitches are. So if I put them tiny up here, I'm going to have little stitches and then uh, bigger stitches as we go. So I'm put one there. I could come in here and do a design and loop back out if I wanted, but I'm just going to stay on here and I'm going to make this heart. Now, after you get done, there's some editing you can do, and we're not going to edit today. I just wanted to get you plotting so that you get comfortable with that, and then we'll work on our editing. I'm at the bottom here, and I'm just going to jump over here and make a big stitch that way, which is fine. Now that it's done, um, what I, you know, what I can do is hit my lock stitch, and it's going to add my, uh, my points. And if I did that, see how I went up here to 28? If I touch anywhere before I lock stitch, it's going to add a point. So I don't want that. So I'm going to do backspace. So that's just something to remember. Don't click on something after you get to your end. You can do lock stitch. There you go. And it's added all those in on there. And again, don't add a point after you lock stitch. You're done with that. We would have to do insert and all of that. So we will work on editing. Uh, on that part next. So now my design is done. If you want to see it stitch, let's open this up here and we'll hit play and you'll see it start out and it's going to jump over. There we go. That's not a bad heart at all, really. And then I would want to save this before I send it to my USB stick. So I would come up to my application tab save as yep i'm going to say okay because i want the software to create that extra stitches for me i'm okay with that and i'm going to put it in the created uh by me uh, folder and i'm just going to call it um uh double a heart just for now so it'll be near the top and save and then i can send it to my uh usb Right to, right to design, and it has a name. I'm good with that, and I'm just going to send it over. Now, if I wanted to uh, do a new design with this heart, now when you're creating in here, you're creating pretty much run line designs. And if I wanted to use, um, make more of an, uh, either a zigzag or something like that, I could plot that in. I'm just gonna come out here like this by going back and forth like this. And I could make a bit of a zigzag that way. I would have to figure out how close, how close I wanted it. So you can do sort of fill in things on there. I know you saw some of my designs like this one here. Let me put it back up so you can see it. See this one, this one here, um, it, those are little zigzag lines, individual lines that are plotted, just like I did here, which I moved them out of the way. So you could do things like that. Um, I did one with my heart. Let me show you what I did with the heart. I'm going to go here and open. I don't want to save this design, so I'm going to say no. And uh, let's see. Oh, it's on my USB stick. We will look at it. Let's see. I don't know what I named it. Not that one. I think it's the. I'm not sure. Let me see what I named it because I can't remember. Let me. It's in here. Uh, 
I'm okay. I don't want to go there. Let's get a new page. Say no. Go. Okay. So we'll look at that one in a minute because I can't remember uh, what I called that one. Bow tail sample. That was the most recent one. All right, so we will look at that one. I know it's loaded onto my USB stick. We can take a look at it in the machine. So I did send all my designs to my USB stick. So we will, um, we can actually, I think we can see them in the file manager if I look here. Here we go. So I think there's a heart in here that I used. Okay, so let's go over to the machine now that we've done this. So you can see how you would work your design over there. So I'm going to close my software and take my USB stick out if my, if everything will communicate well. There we go. Let's go here, remove my USB stick. There we go. Safe to take that out. And then I'm going to take you over to my machine. So we're going to hang on as we zip around, not too fast as I bring you over here. And I will put my stick in the machine. Let me move my camera up so you can see a little bit more. There we go. Now I do have a USB stick in here already and I, I have it on one of those um, uh, USB extenders and I'm gonna put in my other one. So I have two in there. So when you come to your machine, you will have to check on your um, particular model because I think it's the S7 you have to um, open your your decorative stitches, your decorative stitch tab, um, and then there's a little icon I think you find that will bring your uh, piece in. So you just, just check your manual for that so you can use that. And, and actually, some of it might show up in the Stitch Composer software. But on my uh, CM17, I have a created stitches tab, and I can just go to that one i've already loaded designs but if i wasn't there it doesn't matter which one i'm in um, i could just upload a design and i have choices i have my usb2 which is on the extender or my new one so i'm going to pick the new one. Oh, it's in hang on one second yeah this is my flaky usb you know how you have one that's flaky yeah Okay, so we'll, we're gonna pick USB 2. And these are the created stitches that I did. And so here are all the ones that I've created that I've, I have on my USB stick. I have two pages. Let me go up a level here so you can see. This is the ORD file, and these are the folders that are in there, including my ORDF. So I could open these to see what's in there use the up arrow to go back. I have hearts in there, just my graphics of hearts. I might have designs in there, I don't know. Let's see if they're on there. So that I have these extra hearts here. So let's choose smooth heart and see what that is. When I touch it, it will automatically load onto the page here and they're alphabetical. So I have to go to another page and that was smooth heart, so this is my smooth heart. Let's take this away and do smooth heart. So that's what it looks like. I can still use all my tools that I use with um, designing. I have the combination tool. So I can select that. Some of my stitches I can, let me go back here. When I select a stitch, I can use the hand look style. So I can change that, but I have all my tools down here. If I want to see those um, all at once, I can touch the paper at the bottom. And these are all the created stitches that I have in there. Here's that little mixer there. So I can take this away and let's put the mixer up. There we go with the mixer. So it's not that hard to go back and forth and you could use your cable as well, but it, you go to your open file and then wherever you loaded it, um, that's where you would pick it up. If, you're, um, if you did it with your um, cable, they'd be in the machine part of it. And here are the USB sticks that I have. And then of course, all my designs that are in here. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to put the camera back on and we will talk a little bit more and then we'll go from there. So let me see here, get this camera. Here we go. All right, so uh, what I want to do is inspire you to try your, uh, your software your uh, Stitch Composer software. Bring in a graphic. I brought in that nice, um, you bring in a leaf. You can, there's some built-in ones too, but I always find little ones I can clip and bring in there and I can resize it and do different things with it. So start with a heart. That might be easy. Do a loop. There are three lessons and they are over on the Janome uh, Sewing Machines uh, webpage. And if you do a search there for Stitch Composer lessons, you should be able to find those. They were written for this, 15,000 and the, and the 9450, but it's the same program. So you should be able to work with it there. And as we go along, I'm going to cover more of the tools when I come back to uh, work with you again, because I think this is really a fun program, uh, but I want to get you out there plotting your stitches and playing with that. One thing to try bef um, when you're plotting, and I did this today, and I think I'm going to make another one, is I went in and I made this is like a little stitch chart so starting over starting on this side these are you know the little tiny box those are like one box up one box over one box down and then i went to two boxes three boxes you know three lines across and made them bigger and then this little blob right here i made like a really tight loop so i could see that those little tiny movements those little boxes between the bigger boxes the millimeter ones that are the tiny ones between the millimeters, those are really tiny little stitches. So if you make yourself a little diagram of what those stitches look like as you're designing, I think it'll make it easier for you to work. Now you can make your designs go, I pretty much, um, let me see if there's any in here that what I'm talking about, or maybe the boat, this one here. So this one, I, you know, I started in the middle and went across. Most of these I start at the bottom but you can start in the middle and, and you know, in the middle or at the top of the uh, grid, anywhere in that grid, you can start your design. And, and just think about, watch some of your design stitch and watch some that are in your machine stitch and see how, you know, which way they go. Is there a lot of forward and backward? Uh, you know, there's the, there's the forward movement of your foot and then there's the left, right swing of the needle. So you have to think about that when you're, you know, when you're designing how it's going to go. You know, when you do a loop, you're coming back. So if you're doing a lot of back and forth, you know, your foot's going to, you know, your feed dogs are going to bring you back and forth this way. It's really amazing to work with. So I challenge all of you to get out there, create a couple stitches, post your comments down below, and I'll come back and take a look at those. If you run into an issue, get, let me know, and I'd be glad to help you with that. I'm going to figure out how a way we can share some designs maybe have a, a stitch swap somewhere. I have to ask Janome how we can set that up because I think that would be fun to share some of our uh, creative uh, things that we've, we've made. So, all right, everyone, I'm gonna let you go for today. Tune in again when we come back to Stitch Composer. I'm gonna show you more of the tools and we'll get a little bit more difficult with what we're creating. All right, everyone, bye for now. Have a great day.